Now, listen to me just saying, not the people. The main reason is because of the need. If, if I flew commercial, I'd have to stop 65% of what I'm doing. That's really me. Kenneth Copeland, a prominent figure in the televangelist community, has been both revered and criticized for his teachings and lifestyle. His interview, which sparked significant controversy, delves into his use of private jets, his wealth, and the doctrine of prosperity preaching. Let's explore these themes in detail, examining the biblical justifications, public reactions, ethical implications, and the broader debate within the Christian community regarding wealth and religious leadership. Kenneth Copeland's use of private jets has been a focal point of criticism. In the controversial interview, Copeland defended his use of private jets by arguing that they are essential for the efficiency and effectiveness of his ministry. According to Copeland, commercial flights would pose significant logistical challenges, hindering his ability to attend multiple events worldwide and thus diminishing his ministry's impact. He emphasized that private jets allow him to meet his commitments and spread his message more broadly and efficiently. But I had this catch in my spirit said, Answer her. My brother Copeland, you, you own a $45 million. One of the most contentious remarks made by Copeland during the interview was his description of flying commercial as akin to getting into a tube with a bunch of demons. This comment attracted widespread media attention and public backlash. When pressed on this statement, Copeland clarified that he was referring to the negative influences and distractions one might encounter on commercial flights, not the passengers themselves. He stressed the need for a conducive environment to prepare for preaching and ministry work, which he believes is not achievable on commercial flights due to the potential for disturbances and lack of privacy. Kenneth Copeland is one of the wealthiest televangelists in the world, a fact that has drawn both admiration and criticism. In the interview, Copeland acknowledged his substantial wealth, attributing it to various sources, including book sales, real estate investments, and natural gas found on his property. He argued that his wealth is a result of following biblical principles and teachings on prosperity. Copeland has long been associated with prosperity preaching, a doctrine that teaches that financial success and physical well-being are signs of God's favor. He cited several biblical examples to justify his views, including the wealth of Old Testament figures like Abraham. According to Copeland, prosperity is part of God's covenant with believers, and financial abundance is a sign of living in accordance with God's will. Copeland also referenced the teachings of his mentor, Oral Roberts, who was a pioneer of prosperity preaching. Robert's influence on Copeland is evident in his interpretation of Scripture, which emphasizes that God desires his followers to prosper. Copeland contends that his wealth allows him to contribute significantly to charitable causes and spread the Christian message more effectively. Prosperity preaching has been a divisive topic within the Christian community. Critics argue that it distorts the gospel message by placing undue emphasis on material wealth and success. They contend that this doctrine can lead to a form of spiritual materialism where the pursuit of wealth becomes more important than spiritual growth and service to others. In the interview, Copeland addressed these criticisms by asserting that prosperity preaching is often misunderstood. He argued that the Bible supports the idea of believers being prosperous and that his teachings are grounded in scripture. Copeland pointed to various passages in the Bible that he believes endorse the concept of financial prosperity for God's followers. For instance, he mentioned the Abrahamic blessing and the wealth of the disciples as examples of how God rewards those who follow him faithfully. Copeland also addressed the scriptural warning about the difficulty for a rich man to enter heaven, interpreting it as a caution against trusting in wealth rather than a condemnation of wealth itself. He emphasized that his focus is on using his resources to further God's work and help others, rather than accumulating wealth for its own sake. The public reaction to Kenneth Copeland's interview was mixed, reflecting the deep divisions within the Christian community and society at large regarding prosperity preaching and the lifestyles of televangelists. Supporters of Copeland argue that his wealth and use of private jets are justified by the positive impact of his ministry. They believe that financial prosperity is a sign of God's blessing and a tool for advancing the gospel. Critics, 
on the other hand, argue that Copeland's lavish lifestyle is at odds with the principles of humility and modesty often associated with Christian leadership. They contend that the use of private jets and accumulation of wealth by televangelists can create a perception of greed and materialism, undermining the credibility of their message. These critics believe that religious leaders should lead by example, demonstrating modesty and a focus on spiritual rather than material wealth. The ethical implications of prosperity preaching and the lifestyles of televangelists like Kenneth Copeland are significant. One of the primary concerns is the potential for exploitation of vulnerable followers. Critics argue that prosperity preaching can lead to a form of spiritual manipulation, where believers are encouraged to give generously in the expectation of receiving financial blessings in return. This can result in financial hardship for those who give beyond their means hoping for a miraculous return on their investment. Another ethical concern is the message that prosperity preaching sends about the nature of Christian faith. By emphasizing material success as a sign of God's favor, prosperity preaching can create a transactional view of faith, where the focus is on what believers can receive from God rather than how they can serve Him and others. This can distort the core message of Christianity which emphasizes selflessness, humility, and service to others. The debate over prosperity preaching and the lifestyles of televangelists like Kenneth Copeland reflects broader theological differences within the Christian community. Different denominations and theological traditions interpret scripture in various ways, leading to differing views on issues such as wealth, poverty, and the role of religious leaders. Some Christian traditions emphasize the importance of living a modest and humble life, focusing on spiritual rather than material wealth. These traditions often interpret biblical passages about wealth and prosperity as warnings against the dangers of greed and materialism. They believe that religious leaders should set an example of simplicity and selflessness, demonstrating a focus on spiritual growth and service to others. Other traditions, including those associated with prosperity preaching, interpret scripture as endorsing the idea that God desires his followers to prosper materially. They believe that financial success is a sign of God's blessing and a reward for living in accordance with his will. This interpretation emphasizes the importance of faith and positive confession in achieving prosperity and often encourages believers to give generously as a way of demonstrating their faith and receiving God's blessings in return. The role of wealth in religious life is a complex and contentious issue. On one hand, financial resources can be used to further religious missions, support charitable causes, and spread the message of faith. Religious organizations often rely on donations to fund their activities, and financial prosperity can enable them to have a greater impact. On the other hand, the accumulation of wealth by religious leaders can create ethical concerns and public perceptions of greed and materialism. It can also lead to questions about the true motivations of religious leaders and the authenticity of their message. For many believers, the focus on wealth and prosperity can be seen as a departure from the core values of humility, selflessness, and service that are central to the Christian faith. Kenneth Copeland's controversial interview sheds light on the ongoing debate over prosperity preaching and the lifestyles of televangelists. While Copeland defends his use of private jets and luxurious living as necessary for his ministry's effectiveness, critics argue that such a lifestyle contradicts the principles of humility and modesty often associated with Christian leadership. The controversy underscores the broader discussion about the role of wealth in religious life and the ethical implications of prosperity theology. The mixed reactions to Copeland's interview reflect the deep divisions within the Christian community and society at large regarding these issues. Supporters of prosperity preaching believe that financial success is a sign of God's blessing and a tool for advancing the gospel, while critics see it as a distortion.